So Richard Wolff absolutely decimated Milton Friedman's greed is good argument on the Michael Brooks show. Let's watch and then we'll discuss. When you see around the globe the maldistribution of wealth, the, the desperate plight of millions of people in underdeveloped countries, uh, when you see so few haves and so many have-nots, when you, when you see the greed and the concentration of power within, don't, aren't you ever, did you ever have a moment of doubt about capitalism? And whether greed's a good idea to run on? Well, first of all, tell me, is there some society you know that doesn't run on greed? You think Russia doesn't run on greed? You think China doesn't run on greed? What is greed? Of course, none of us are greedy. It's only the other fellow who's greedy. <laughs> this, the world runs on individuals pursuing their separate interests. The great achievements of civilization have not come from government bureaus. Einstein didn't construct his theory under order from a, from a, a bureaucrat. Henry Ford didn't revolutionize the automobile industry that way. In the only cases in which the masses have escaped from the kind of grinding poverty you're talking about, the only cases in recorded history are where they, where they have had capitalism and largely free trade. If you want to know where the masses are worth, worse off, worst off, it's exactly in the kinds of societies that depart from that. So that the record of history is absolutely crystal clear that there is no alternative way so far discovered of improving the lot of the ordinary people that can hold a candle to the productive activities that are unleashed by a free enterprise system. But it seems to reward not virtue as much as ability to manipulate the system. Uh, and what does reward virtue? You think the uh, communist commissar rewards virtue? You think a Hitler rewards virtue? You think, excuse me, if you'll pardon me, do you think American presidents reward virtue? Do they choose their appointees on the basis of the virtue of the people appointed or on the basis of their political clout? Is it really true that political self-interest is nobler somehow than economic self-interest? You know, I think you're taking a lot of things for granted. And just tell me where in the world you find these angels who are going to organize society for us. Well, I don't even trust you to do that. <laughs> wow. Well, dunked and owned. Uh, Professor Wolf, uh, this is the best they had. What's your response? Well, I, well every time I listen to Mr. Uh, Friedman, I close my eyes and I say to myself, there's living proof, or it was living proof, <laughs> that the Nobel Prize is not given to anybody except if they toe the line. He got a Nobel Prize for telling us that greed is the engine of human behavior, that human beings pursue their own self-interest. This is a man who presumably has a modicum of education. If he did, and I really, I, I must wonder listening to this kind of drivel, <laughs> what, what, what the world, did he never understand psychology? For a hundred years, psychologists have explained to us with empirical studies and theoretical work that human beings are bundles of contradictions, that what is my self-interest is something I only dimly perceive, and moreover, many of the things I'm interested in contradict one another. I both like and don't like people. I both am drawn to and repulsed by this thing. I want that, but I don't really. I went and I got that, and now I wonder, having consumed it, why did I ever do that? Because I didn't like it at all. We are not some kind of calculus machine. This is the pursues. first noble truth of Buddhism, this yeah, constant state of dissatisfaction. Silly, this mechanical, no, we're here pursuing our self-interest, <laughs> as if we knew what it was. Human <laughs> beings don't know, and they're changing all the time, so even if they know, their knowledge is out of date within moments of having conceived the idea. Th these are not complex ideas, but they're way beyond anything, Mr. Uh, Friedman can manage. And that's not, by the way, because he's illiterate or uneducated. It's because he has a job to do. And that job is to sell private enterprise. Capitalist private enterprise is the best thing, the only thing, the right thing. Just beat it over and over. I always thought 
we're a mix of stuff. Like human beings, it's not it's not like we're purely greedy and it's not like we're purely altruistic. We're obviously a mix. We're obviously greedy sometimes and altruistic other times. And whenever people try to take a, a political ideology or philosophy and like one of the foundational points of that philosophy is human beings are either purely altruistic or purely selfish, I always felt it was like square peg round hole type stuff. Because it just, I feel like that so obviously disregards what we are. In the same way that sometimes people try to argue that human beings, everything we do is just, it's, it's natural. It's in our nature. It's genetic. It's biological. It just is what it is. And other people argue, no, 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 we're molds of clay and it's all nurture and it's all our environment around us and our culture that shapes us, but all it's all malleable and changeable. Again, it's another instance where I say, it's both, it's both, it's both. Some some stuff about us is nature, some stuff about us is nurture, you know, uh, and it's complex. It's not, it's not like an easy cut and dry answer that we could just give. So when people say nature or nurture, like the old philosophy debate, you go both. When people say, are humans greedy or altruistic, you say, both. <laughs> so, yeah, you have to try to create a system that fosters all of the natural human impulses and instincts. You never want to, you know, swim against the, the tide. Um, and funny enough, that's Milton Friedman's argument of don't swim against the tide. But he thinks we're, not, we're purely selfish, and that's the only way to build a society that functions is just around selfishness. And it's like, well, no, that's not true. So take, for example, you know, what's selfish about a universal healthcare system that, you know, exists in every other developed country? Well, that's more on the altruistic side of the equation, not the selfish side. You know, it's like, oh, well, everybody deserves this because it's the right thing. It's the moral thing. It's the ethical thing. It's a, almost like a basic human right they view it as. That's a more altruistic argument. But then on the other hand, the existence of any kind of private enterprise for whatever it might be, you could say, well, somebody got into this field and created this product because they did want to get rich and sort of check out. So that's like a little bit of a selfish pursuit. Um, but it did also have some public benefit if they created something that people really liked. So to build a system purely based on selfishness or purely based on altruism is madness. Richard Wolff is right that Milton Friedman needed to make this argument to justify totally unfettered, laissez-faire, free market capitalism. Because you... He's trying to paint captains of industry as virtuous as opposed to, you know, complex characters who've done some good things and some terrible things and we can analyze it objectively and say, hey man, stop polluting that river. No, he would say, well, you're going after them for polluting that river, but look at all the good that they did. The CEO of this company provided a product that was used by millions of people, so that's a positive thing. And sure, he did it based on greed, but the greed ended up being positive for everybody in society. So just shut the fuck up and accept the fact we're all greedy, and that's the end of the conversation. It is very propagandistic. And he goes on to explain, Richard Wolff does, in that full clip, which I'll leave in the video description box, um, about how th it was actually a brilliant move of the corporations to find somebody and prop somebody up who was willing to be their intellectual cover. And that's the role that Milton Friedman plays. The role he plays is to say, well, you know what? You di distrust the politicians, distrust the leaders, distrust the people who want to make decisions based off of morality and altruism, but definitely don't distrust the captains of industry because they're the only pure people who are really being true to themselves and acknowledging that, yes, this society's run off greed, but that's not a bad thing. Very Gordon Gecko-ish. <laughs> that's exactly the argument Gordon Gecko made. And I think Richard Wolff is right. And honestly... If you ask Richard Wolf, he would tell you, my response wasn't hard, because it is true. Talk to anybody who's, you know, been involved in psychology or psychiatry, and they will tell you, it's not as simple as human beings are selfish. We are a bundle of contradictions. We are both selfish, selfish and altruistic. We are both, both individualistic and collectivist. We're both of those things. So yeah, it would make sense to have a system that fosters all of those natural impulses and harnesses them for good as opposed to what Milton Friedman is calling for which is just give in to only your selfish side and that's representative of you and therefore let's build a society purely around greed and voila would you look at that then the answer becomes capitalism which is exactly what he was pushing.